Hello, my name is Arne Hessenbrook. Uh, I'm a lecturer at MIT, and the idea that I think is worth spreading is to reorganize teaching around the passion of the student. Now, I would like to invite you all to think about your best and worst experiences in school and in learning while I tell you about some of mine. Um, I mean, I was subject to, to uh, physical uh, punishment once, and I have to say I deserved it, so it's not really worth talking about. Uh, but uh, hum humiliation was a part of normality when I was a kid in the following sense. It was perfectly normal for, for, for uh, teachers to pluck a student at random and to place the student in front of the class, and then you'd be cross-examined. And um, if you didn't know the right answer, sometimes you'd be humiliated and, you know, the class would laugh. That was the worst part. Everyone laughing nervously, thinking, thank God it's not me and I hope the teacher isn't asking a second person up there. So that, that was, you know, par for the course. Um, but the, the, the most common bad experience in school was, was boredom. Uh, you know, feeling completely disconnected from the subject matter and looking out of the window and the sun is shining and the birds are singing and you can hear some children playing in the background and you just don't want to be there, right? I mean, do you, do you know what I'm talking about or is it just me? Yeah, yeah, every, every non, everyone knows this, right? Um, so, uh, but I would have to say for me personally, the, the good outweighs the bad. Mostly, I had teachers who managed to, to um, make it interesting. I forgot the time. Um, and I learned a lot. You know, I learned a lot of the, um, the curriculum that we were supposed to learn, languages, math, science, uh, history, geography, this kind of stuff, and, 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 and that's all good. Now, but if you ask me, what, what was my most joyful experience in school? And I would have to say, is not related to, to the learning at all. It's, it's, it's related to the few moments when authority was lifted or inverted. So we had um, supply teachers uh, when I was a kid, meaning, you know, if the real teacher fell ill, then a young, usually inexperienced person would come in and take the class. And we kids loved it <laughs> because we saw an opportunity to have some fun. They were usually not very good at keeping control of the classroom. So, and I can remember one, vividly remember one class where we actually just left the classroom. We, we climbed out of the window, it was on the ground floor, and we sat outside and chatted, and, and it, was, it was just such fun to do that. We're a little bit nervous, you know, is the punishment coming? But it was just this absolutely blissful moment. And then also, if you ask me, what is my best learning experience? Um, it's not related to school at all. Um, you know, I think we all have um, a passion of some kind. Football, fandom, food, fitness, whatever. In my case, it was chess. Um, I love playing chess, and before you think that it's a cerebral, quiet kind of pursuit, let me show you a little bit about how kids have fun when they play chess. You know, it's like... Hey! Look, look! And then if the opponent makes a good move, it's like... You know, then your body stops, and you, you know, you're looking for something, and if you find that it's... Take that! Hey, I'm winning! So, it's actually a pursuit that is full of joy. Now, most of the learning came afterwards. I would go home, and I would look for mistakes I had made. I would try to think about how could I improve. Um, so, it was self-directed learning. You know, nobody told me to do this. I studied. I studied hard. I spent much more time learning chess than doing my homework. And I really had to go out and find material myself. You know, I, nobody said, well, you know, read this book. I went out and f I found books, and I, 
I was doing all this stuff on my own. So it was, it was um, there's a form of resilience in it, you know, instead of being, feeling down about losing, you, you learn to uh, take it as a spurn to learn more. Uh, and as I said, this was outside of school and completely different. I find this distinction between implicit and explicit very useful. The explicit is the curriculum, the, um, the subject matter, you know, the, the, the languages, math, science. And it's what we normally pay attention to. After all, it's what we measure. It's what we grade students by. Uh, and then orthogonally to, to that is the implicit, how we teach. Um, the, the way we can either passivate students or activate students, or make them reactive, only reactive to the prompts from the teacher, or proactive, as in going out and searching for stuff yourself. You can make students obedient by practicing obedience, or you can make students um, take the initiative by having them practice taking the initiative. So I feel that this, is, this, is, this orthogonality is useful because on the one hand you have the, um, the explicit that we normally think about and I'm saying let's, let's pay attention to the implicit. Right? So the implicit is then stuff like resilience, um, grit, the joy of learning as in the ability and the willingness to learn which you can practice. The, the law of the land says the blossoming of the child, its creativity and confidence in its own capacity. And I think this is a wonderful uh, 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 statement, and many other jurisdictions have similar um, uh, mission statements. Um, and it's just that most of the stuff that we normally pay attention to, the explicit, doesn't connect up to the blossoming of the child in any obvious ways. Whether I know Rook endings is not really relevant for my blossoming. Um, but whether I have learned grit and whether I have willingness and ability to learn, team member, uh, learning to, to, to problem solve and take the initiative is clearly related to this statement. So, and at the center of it, the core of it is the confidence of the child, which is in the um, uh, statement itself. So these are the things that matter. I would argue much more than the uh, explicit, uh, the subject matter. So I was sitting around with um, uh, some people at the adult education department in the Ministry of Education here in Luxembourg, the CNFPC, and we were thinking about, you know, could we maybe do an experiment with this and, and so, or maybe a series of experiments it would be interesting to do, and so we've, we've started doing that. So we, we did a course last month, and the idea was to uh, maximize the, um, the implicit and not really care about the explicit. So we had the students come in, they were about 20 years old, and we said, we want you to do a project. The project can be whatever you want, you just have to really care about it. You have to be passionate about it. And I, I think we learned some interesting things from that. that for, for, one thing is we learned the students really had a hard time getting used to the idea. Here's, here they were in an educational setting, and we were not telling them what to do. It was, it was very confusing for them. Um, so that's interesting in itself. It took them about two hours to get on board with, oh, this is, you, you, okay. And the other thing that we learned is, is perhaps even more interesting because my, my co-teacher uh, before the class was very anxious. Um, you know, we had, um, we had four hours of class and, the, and the, the, in the class the students were going to be in charge. And, and my, my co-teacher, uh, really wanted to fill it up with, he wanted to have lots of breaks and have a, a guest speaker in. Um, it made him very, very nervous, this situation. So let me tell you a story about my worst experience as a teacher, because I think it, 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 sort of, it, it 
goes to the point of why he was nervous. Because I've been a supply teacher myself. I was about 20 years old. Um, and I went into this class of 13-year-olds, and I could see their, light, their eyes light up as I came in because they saw a young, inexperienced uh, person, and they saw the opportunity to have some fun. Um, and I was teaching the course, and then I heard this noise from over there. It was, it was um, you know, like, and I knew what it was because in those days we, we had digital watches and they were new. I had one myself, and one of the functions it had was a, an alarm. You know, so you could, you could press a button and it would go, so I knew exactly what it was. I just didn't know where it was coming from. So, you know, trying to teach the class, I would sidle over in the general direction of the noise, you know, to figure out who is the student that I should pick on here, right? And when I got a little bit closer, closer, the, the, the noise stopped, and then it started over there. <laughs> so, you know, I pretended nothing was happening. I was just teaching the class after all, right, you know? And I would sidle over here to to hear where it was coming from. And when I got close, it started over there, right? So the students were running rings around me, and there was a lot of sniggering going on in the class. And I'm pretty sure that if we asked them, what was the best moment you ever had in school? <laughs> it would be that class, all right? But let me tell you, I did not enjoy it. It was, uh, it was humiliating, and, and I also felt incompetent. You know, as a, as a teacher, you're supposed to have control of the class, and I lost control. And I think, in general, the, the worst nightmare of teachers is losing control of the class, right? So here I was with my co-teacher, and I was saying, the students are going to be in charge for four hours, and he was panicking. And we're learning from this, right? So we, we want to put in enough structure so that teachers are not uncomfortable, but not so much that it takes away the, the, um, the initiative taking of the students. And so, you know, we don't have the answers. I, I, I don't have the answers but I know where I want to go. I want to reorganize teaching around the passion of the learner. Thank you.